Diyos. Maraming salamat po sa buhay at lakas na aming tagnay. Sa liwanag ng kaisipan at sa pagkakataon, maipagpatuloy ang pag-aaral ng mga kabataan. Gabay mo po ang bawat isa sa amin. Ano man ang bahagi na nagagampanan, naway maging maayos at matagumpay ang pagtuturo at pag-aaral na aming gagawin sa araw na ito. Patawarin mo po kami sa aming mga pagkulang at pagkakasala. At sa aming paggawa, ikaw po ang aming makasama. Amen. Let us go back in time to discover the different arts and crafts of each culture and tradition. This is the quarter two, episode one of Art Wonderland with Ma'am Ivy and Monkey. What's going on, Art Wonders? It's me once again, Ma'am Ivy, and now we are on the second quarter of Art Subject in Valenzuela Live. I know you are all excited to discover the distinct characteristics, elements, and principles of art, famous artworks, and representative artists from the Renaissance and Baroque period. Buckle up and be ready with your paper, pen, and learning packet as we take a new wonderful expedition only here in the Art Wonderland! But before we begin our Art Wonderful expedition, let us first be reminded of the protocols to follow during the live streaming class. Protocols to follow during the live streaming class. Respect everyone. Agree to recognize and abide by the protocols in the live stream and respect the feelings, rights, or traditions of everyone. No hate speech. Do not express or discourage violence towards a person or group based on something such as race, religion, sex, or sexual orientation. Be guided with the anti-cyberbullying law. Make sure that everyone feels safe. Bullying of any kind isn't allowed, and degrading comments about things such as race, religion, culture, sexual orientation, gender, or identity will not be tolerated. No promotion of products or items. Give more to this group than you take. Selling of products, self-promotion, spam, and irrelevant links aren't allowed. Use appropriate words in giving suggestions, comments, and queries. We're all in this together to create a welcoming environment. Let's treat everyone with respect. Healthy debates are natural, but kindness is required. After the FB live streaming, attend follow-up discussion in the different platforms provided by your subject teachers such as Messenger, Google Classroom, Google Meet, or MS Teams. Maximize the features of the different platforms to deepen your understanding of the competencies with the help of your subject teachers. I hope everyone will be guided by the protocols for us to maintain order during our session. At the end of our Art Wonderful Expedition, you are expected to Analyze art elements and principles in the production of work following a specific art style. Identify distinct characteristics of arts during the Renaissance and Baroque period. Identify representative artists from the Renaissance and Baroque period. Reflect on and derive the mood, idea, or message from the selected artworks. Discusses the use or function of artworks by evaluating their utilization and combination of art elements and principles. Uses artworks to derive the traditions or history of an art period and compares the characteristics of artworks produced in the different art periods. Before we proceed with our lesson, let us call Bonky to help you in our activity. Now let us have a recap on the Western classical arts tradition by playing a game entitled, That Artwork Looks Familiar. Try to identify the different artworks that I will show you in this activity. I will reveal the answer after 5 seconds. Are you ready? 
Let's begin. Artwork number one. It's the cave of Lasco, you got it right. The dominant aspects in the painting were giant animals native to the region. It has been given statutory ancient monument protection. Here is artwork number two. That's a wall painting in King Tutankhamun's tomb, what a memory you have. The motive of Egyptian paintings was to make the diseased afterlife pleasant. Let's see if you can still remember our artwork number three. Correct. That's the sarcophagus from Servitiri. This was made of terracotta with a length of 6 feet and 7 inches or 2.06 meters with a husband and wife reclining comfortably. Let's proceed to artwork number 4. That's right. It's Myron, the Discobolus. It shows an attitude of maximum tension, full of compressed energy, and about to explode in action. Now we are down to the last artwork. That is the Colosseum. Perfect. In Roman architecture, they built sturdy stone structures which are being used to perpetuate their glory. The emperors erected huge halls and arenas for public games, baths, and procession. They built gigantic arches of stone, bricks, and concrete or with barrel vaults. Congratulations dear students, you always amaze me. Back to you ma'am Ivy. Thank you Bonky! Now that you finish recalling the Western classical arts tradition, let us have an activity called Loop a Word. In this activity, type in the comment box the words you will see in the word puzzle. These 13 words are connected to the Renaissance and Baroque period. Are you ready? Your one minute timer will start now. Let's now answer. For horizontal words we have, Renaissance, Mona Lisa, David, Rembrandt, and Donatello. For vertical words we have, Sculpture, Rubens Raphael, Pieta, Velasquez, and Michelangelo. And for diagonal words we have, Da Vinci, Baroque, and Bernini. It's great that you found all the 13 words inside the word puzzle. Good job. Ma'am Ivy it's your turn. Before you get fully excited, you may want to participate in our short activity by typing your answer to each number in our comment section. In this activity, arrange the jumbled letters to form the word in 5 seconds. Number 1. It refers to arrangement and symmetry. Did you answer balance? You are right. It deals with the creation of a focal area in a work of art. The correct answer is emphasis. It involves decorating with planned and repeated units. If your answer is pattern, you are right. For the last jumbled word, 
It means elements are harmoniously together and variety adds interest. It's unity. Great job! I think you are now equipped for our new lesson. We can now go back in time as you visit that and discover the distinct characteristic, elements, and principles of art, famous artworks, and representative artists from the Renaissance and Baroque period. Welcome to the Renaissance period, started during 1400s to 1600s. The word Renaissance comes from the word renaitre, which means rebirth. The Renaissance is a period of economic progress, third enthusiasm for the study of ancient philosophy and artistic values, began in the late 14th century. Era of great artistic and intellectual achievement with the birth of secular art. Focus was on realistic and humanistic art. Renaissance artworks characterized by accurate anatomy, scientific perspective, and deeper landscape. Renaissance artists depicted real-life figures and their sculptures were naturalistic portraits of human beings. Architectures during this period was characterized by its symmetry and balance. As the classical Greeks believed in the harmonious development of the person through a sound mind by the practice of athletics, the Renaissance held up the ideal of the well-rounded person, knowledgeable in several fields such as philosophy, science, arts, including paintings, and music, and who applies his or her knowledge to productive and creative activities. The most common subject of this period is human philosophy. The Renaissance was a period of artistic experimentation. It brought people into a full view, just like the human figures in Greek art. Renaissance art makes the transition of Europe from the medieval period to the early modern age. In many parts of Europe, early Renaissance art was created in parallel with late medieval art. By 1500s, the Renaissance style prevailed. The greatest cathedral building of the age was the rebuilding of St. Peter's Basilica in Rome. Now, let us perceive the famous Renaissance artworks and artists. The first one is Michelangelo de Lodovico Bonarotti Simoni, an Italian sculptor, painter, architect, and poet considered the greatest living artist of his lifetime. And since then, he has been considered as one of the greatest artists of all time. His famous work is the Pieta. He approached the subject, which until then had been given from mostly from north of the Alps, where the portrayal of pain had always related to the idea of redemption as represented by the seated Madonna holding Christ's body in her arms. The material used in this sculpture is marble. Other outstanding works as sculpture are Bacchus, Moses, The Dying Slave, and The Dawn and Dust. Next artist we have is Leonardo de Serpiero da Vinci. A painter, architect, scientist, and mathematician. He was popularized in present times through the novel and movie Da Vinci Code. He was known as the ultimate Renaissance man. Because of his intellect, interest, talent, and his expression of humanist and classical values, he was also considered to be one of the greatest painters of all time and perhaps the most diversely talented person to have ever lived. His well-known works were The Last Supper, The Most Reproduced Religious Painting of All Times, and The Mona Lisa, The Most Famous and The Most Paradise Portrait. 
Did you know that Mona Lisa, La Gioconda from Leonardo da Vinci's masterpiece, was a real person? And we're not talking about a self-portrait of the artist, as you may think. Mona Lisa was a real Florentine woman, born and raised in Florence under the name of Lisa Gerardini. He is the wife of Francesco del Gioconda. Mona, in Italian, is a polite form of address originating as Madonna like ma'am, madam, or my lady in English. This became Madonna and its contraction Mona. The title of the painting true traditionally spelled Mona is also commonly spelled in modern Italian as Mona Lisa. Materials used in this artwork are all painting on a poplar wood panel. His other works were The Vitruvian Man, The Adoration of the Maggie, and The Virgin of the Rocks. Next artist we have is Raffaello Sanzo da Ordino or Raphael, an Italian painter and architect of the High Renaissance period. His work was admired for its clarity of form and ease of composition and for its visual achievement of interpreting the divine and incorporating Christian doctrines. Together with Michelangelo and Leonardo da Vinci, he formed a traditional trinity of great masters of that period. His main contributions to art were his unique draftsmanship and compositional skills. His famous works were The Transfiguration, the Transfiguration is a pivotal moment, and the setting on the mountains is presented as the point where human nature meets God. The meeting place for the temporal and the eternal, with Jesus himself as the connecting point, acting as the bridge between heaven and earth. The Transfiguration was Raphael's last painting, which he worked up up to his death. Commissioned by Cardinal Julio de Medici, the late Pope Clement VII, the painting was conceived as an altarpiece for the Narbonne Cathedral in France. The subject was combined with an additional episode from the Gospel in the lower part of the painting. Other works were the Sistine Madonna and the School of Athens. The last artist from the Renaissance period that we have is Donato de Niccolo de Beto Barti, or simply Donatello. Donatello was one of the Italian great artists of the period. He was an early Renaissance Italian sculptor from Florence. He is known for his work in bas relief, a form of shallow relief sculpture. His works included the following statues and relief. We have the David. It is a famous bronze figure and first known freestanding statue that is nude except for wearing helmet and boots. His other works were the statue of St. George, the equestrian monument of Gatamela, Prophet Habakkuk, and the Feast of Herod. After the idealizing of the Renaissance and the slightly forced nature of mannerism, welcome to the Baroque period. Baroque art above all reflects the tensions of the age, notably the desire of the Catholic Church in Rome to reassert itself in the wake of the Protestant Reformation, which is almost the same with Catholic Reformation art of the period. The arts of the Baroque period are more elaborate and fuller of emotion. They developed in Europe around 1600s. The term Baroque was derived from the Portuguese word Baroco, which means irregularly shaped pearl or stone. The Baroque paintings illustrated key elements of Catholic dogma, either directly in biblical works or indirectly in imaginary or symbolic work. The gestures are broader than mannerist gestures, less ambiguous, less arcane, and less mysterious. 
Baroque sculptures, typically larger than the life size, are marked by a similar sense of dynamic movement, along with an active use of space. While Baroque architecture was designed to create spectacles and illusions, thus the straight lines of the Renaissance were replaced with flowing curves. Now let us see the famous Baroque artworks and meet the artist behind it. The first artist we have is Michelangelo Merisi or Amarigi da Caravaggio, or also known as Caravaggio. Italian artist who wanted to deviate from the classical masters of the Renaissance, an outcast of his society. Be because of his own, perhaps he started out as a specialist in his paintings of still life, especially of fruits. Among his famous paintings were Conversion of St. Paul. The Conversion of St. Paul was according to the New Testament, an event in the life of Paul the Apostle that led him to cease persecuting early Christians and to become a follower of Jesus. The material used in this painting was oil on canvas. Other works were Supper at Emmaus, and Entombment of Christ. The next artist we have is Gian Lorenzo Bernini. Bernini was an Italian and first Baroque artist. He practiced architecture and sculpture, painting, stage design, and was also a playwright. He was also the last in the list of dazzling universal geniuses. As a prodigy, his first artwork dates from his 8th birthday. His famous work is David. He made the sculpture of David that was for the Cardinal Borghese, which is strikingly different from the Michelangelo's David because it shows the differences between the Renaissance and the Baroque periods. Among his early works were the goat Amaltea with infant Jupiter and a fawn, the damned soul, and the blessed soul. The famous ecstasy of St. Teresa was his greatest achievement and the colonnade of the Piazza of St. Peter's Rome. The sculpture shows a two central figures of the swimming nun and the angel with the spirit derived from the episode described by Teresa of Avila. It was made with white marble. The next artist is Peter Paul Rubens. Rubens was a Flemish Baroque painter. He was well known for his paintings of mythical and figurative subjects, landscapes, portraits, and counter-reformation altar pieces. His commissioned works were mostly religious subjects, history paintings of magical creatures, and hunt scenes. His famous works were Portrait of Helene Forment. She was the second wife of Baroque painter Rubens. She was also the subject of a few paintings and modeled for other religious and mythological paintings. It is made with oil paint panels. Other works were Samson and Delilah, The Landscape with the Tower, and The Three Graces. Moving on from the next artist, we have Rembrandt Hammerzoon van Rijn, a brilliant Dutch realist, painter, and etcher. Generally considered as one of the greatest painters and printmakers in European art. Followed no faith but was interested in spiritual values and often chose religious subjects. Chairs with Rubens to the revolution whereby painting came to depict the more personal aspects of the painter, his own home and his family. His well-known work was his self-portrait in old age. No artist has painted himself as often as did by Rembrandt. His concept of himself continued to deepen in graphs of subtlety while his technique grew more daring. This painting of him is made of oil on canvas. 
Rembrandt had produced over 600 paintings, nearly 400 etchings, and 2,000 drawings. The last artist we have is Diego Velázquez, developed out of the Baroque, one of the finest masters of composition and one of the most important painters of the Spanish Golden Age. Work out solutions to pictorial problems of design that transcend the style of any period. He was the case of a painter who discovered his avocation almost at the very start of his career. The passion for still life frequently emerged in Velázquez's art. His famous works were Las Meninas or The Maid of Honor. He created this work four years before his death and served as an outstanding example of the European Baroque period of art. Margaret Teresa, the oldest daughter of the new queen, appears to be the subject of this painting. It was unclear as to who or what was the true subject. It may be the royal daughter or the painter himself. Other works were The Surrender of Breda, Los Boracos or The Drinkers, and Maria Teresa. Now, let us compare the characteristic of artworks produced in the different art periods. For the paintings of the Renaissance, painters depicted real-life figures, while for the paintings of Baroque, it illustrated key elements of Catholic dogma, either directly in biblical works or indirectly in imaginary or symbolic work. The gestures are broader than mannerist gestures, less ambiguous, less arcane and mysterious. For the sculptures, of the Renaissance period were naturalistic portraits of human beings. On the other hand, Baroque sculptures were typically larger than the life size. It's marked by a similar sense of dynamic movement along with an active use of space. And for the architecture of the Renaissance, architecture during this period was characterized by its symmetry and balance. While for the Baroque, Baroque architectures was designed to create spectacles and illusions. Thus, the straight lines of the Renaissance were replaced with flowing curves. And that's it for our lesson for today. Are you ready for another activity? Take it away, Bonky! Identification. Identify the name of the following artists written inside the box with the given description on each number. Number 1. An early Renaissance Italian sculptor from Florence and known for his work in bas-relief, a form of shallow relief sculpture. That's right. That is Donatello. Number 2. An Italian artist who wanted to deviate from the classical masters of the Renaissance and started out as a specialist in his paintings of still life, especially of fruits. If you answer Carabaggio, you are right. Number 3. A painter, architect, scientist, and mathematician and was known as the ultimate Renaissance man because of his intellect, interest, talent and his expression of humanist and classical values. Correct. Da Vinci is the right answer. Number 4. A Flemish Baroque painter and well known for his paintings of mythical and figurative subjects, landscapes, portraits, and counter-reformation altarpieces. Did you answer Rubens? You are right. Number 5. An Italian sculptor, painter, architect, and poet which considered as one of the greatest artists of all time. It's Michelangelo. Great job! Renaissance art is the art of calm and beauty. Its creations are perfect. They reveal nothing forced or inhibited. 
uneasy or agitated. Each form has been born easily, free, and complete. Everything breeds satisfaction, and we are surely not mistaken in seeing in this heavenly calm and content the highest artistic expression and spirit of that age. Baroque aims to give an effect that wants to carry the viewers away with the force of its impact. It gives not a generally enhanced vitality, but excitement, ecstasy, and intoxication. Its impact was intended to be momentary, while that of the Renaissance was slower but more enduring, making the viewers want to linger forever in its presence. The Baroque required broad, heavy, and massive forms. Elegant proportions disappeared and buildings tended to become heavier until becomes the forms were almost crushed by the pressure. The grace and the lightness of the Renaissance were gone. All forms became broader and heavier. By the time St. Peter's Basilica was completed, another architectural style was developed by the architects who knew all the rules that have been so carefully recovered and chose to break them. It was during this period that that effect was of a dynamic style of architecture in which the forms seemed to take on life of their own, moving, swaying, and undulating. Many European cathedrals have Baroque features, high altars, facades, and chapels. Now, I am very confident that you can already use the lesson I discussed today. Grab your pen and paper and write your answers on your notes or you may directly type your answer in the comment section. Are you ready? Let us find out the answers. You will be given 5 seconds to answer each question. Number 1. The portrayal of pain had always related to the idea of redemption as represented by the seated Madonna holding Christ's body in her arms. Letter A David. B Pieta. C The Last Supper. D The School of Athens. Number 2. This painting was made by Velasquez that means, the maid of honor. He created this work four years before his death and served as an outstanding example of the European Baroque period of art. Letter A Conversion of Saint Paul. B Los Meninas. C Mona Lisa. D. Rembrandt Self-Portrait Number 3. It was Raphael's last painting which he worked on up to his death. Commissioned by Cardinal Giulio de' Medici, the late Pope Clement VII, the painting was conceived as an altarpiece for the Narbonne Cathedral in France. Letter A. Maria Teresa. B. Portrait of Helene Formant. C. Sampson and Delilah. D. The Transfiguration. Number 4. It was the first known freestanding nude statue produced since ancient times. Letter A. Bacchus. B. David. C. Ecstasy of Saint Teresa. D. Moses. Number 5. A polite form of address in Italian originating as Madonna, like ma'am, madam, or my lady in English. Letter A. Helene Formant. B. Margaret. C. Mona Lisa. D. Teresa. Now let us check. Here are the answers. Number 1 is letter B. Pieta. 2. B. Los Meninas. 3. D. The Transfiguration. 4. B. David. 5. C. Mona Lisa. Did you get all the answers correctly? I hope so. Very good everyone. You all did great. Thank you so much, Bonky, and great job, Art Wonders! It was another long journey. I hope you learned so much today. Once again, this is Ma'am Ivy, your Wonder Art Teacher, and remember this quote from George Clooney that, Art takes different forms, but it represents something that is basic in all of us, our history. Stay safe, everyone! Have a good day and see you on our next tour.